Hi guys, welcome back to your number one source for Philippines travel guides. Be sure to hit that subscribe button now so you never miss a new guide. Today, I want to show you in as much detail as I can how to travel the island of Cebu. I'll be talking about the city itself, its surrounding areas, as well as South Cebu, as I've spent extensive time in these areas. Sadly, I've not yet made it to North Cebu. A video about traveling there will be posted in the future. Also, be aware that there will be things I miss. I'm only one person, so things will of course slip by me as well. If you feel I missed something huge, go ahead and put it in the comments so people planning their own trips can see it. Without further ado, let's get started. You'll most likely arrive in Cebu at the airport, so we'll start in this area. The airport is located in the small island of Mactan, which is connected to Cebu by a bridge. Before arriving in Cebu, you should set up the app called Grab on your phone. It's basically the same as Uber. Take a grab from the airport to the city itself to get to your hotel. Also, just so you know, I'll be putting links to all the hotels I stayed at during my travels in the description. A lot of people just skip over the city, but I truly believe this is a mistake. There's so much to see and do here. I recommend you spend at least three days here, maybe more if you want to really experience it all. As far as getting around the city goes, you have a lot of options. The cheapest is to take jeepneys. These are the most popular form of transportation for the locals as it's so cheap. A normal jeepney ride will cost you only 7 pesos, though it'll be more if you're going further. Just ask the locals which number jeepney to get on for where you're trying to go, and shout LUGAR! to get it to stop when you arrive at your location. Other options include these little blue buses called beeps, which are also very cheap, but much harder to find than jeepneys. Grab, which will be your most comfortable way to get somewhere, but it will cost much more. And motorcycles known as hobble hobble. Hobble hobble drivers will be asking you everywhere if you need a ride, and they cost much more than other means of transportation. But they're definitely one of the faster ways to get places. If you don't want to ride a hobble hobble, but the drivers keep asking you for rides, just say Dili Kuya, which means no thank you sir, or Humana Mikuya, which basically means you're already done for today. Saying these things will give you a much nicer response than just using English to say no. Okay, now that you know how to get around, let's talk about where to go. Start by exploring the malls of Cebu. Malls in the Philippines are extremely nice, and I promise you they're worth visiting. The best malls in Cebu include Ayala Mall, SM City, and the biggest of the three, SM Seaside. All three are worth visiting. I also recommend shopping in the supermarket at these malls to buy your food as it'll save you a lot of money. Also, you may want to check out IT Park. It's not really a mall, but it's still a fun place to hang out. Speaking of food, eat at the famous Filipino fast food restaurant Jollibee. Try Noyong from Chinese Noyong in downtown Cebu. Eat Lechon from one of the many places you can have it. Go to Sugbo Mercado in IT Park during one of your nights in the city. And finally have Saul's Halo Halo, which is by far my favorite Halo Halo. When you have it, make sure you mix it all together. It feels wrong, but that's how it's meant to be eaten. If you want to, you can go on a history tour in the city. Check out Fort San Pedro to learn all about Spanish rule in Cebu. Go to Basilica del Santo Niño to see truly one of the most magnificent churches as well as Magellan's Cross. You can also check out the oldest road in the Philippines, Cologne Street, and in your history tour at the Heritage of Cebu Monument. Once you've brushed up on your history, it's time for those Instagrammable locations. Start with Cebu Taoist Temple. This place is bigger than the pictures make it look online, with a lot to see, learn, and photograph. Definitely don't miss getting a picture in front of the huge dragon but sorry guys you're not allowed to ride it next up you can head to the temple of Leia. yeah the video you're seeing right now really is in the philippines this place truly looks like it's been lifted out of ancient rome or greece and dropped into the middle of the philippines right around the corner from here is tops lookout this is absolutely the best place you can see the city from extremely high up i personally recommend you come here at sunset and walk down the street to the tops restaurant right next door for dinner close to tops is terrazas de flores botanica garden. I haven't personally been here, but look it up if you like gardens. Next up is maybe one of the most Instagrammable gardens of all time, Sirao Garden. For a small entrance fee, you have this whole huge garden that looks like it was solely built for the purpose of getting good Instagram shots. My only warning for this place is it's pretty popular, so don't expect to have it all to yourself. If you do want a garden all to yourself, 
take the time to go up just a bit further to Buacan ni Alejandra. This is a truly beautiful garden. Unlike Sirao, this place doesn't look like it was built only for Instagram, and there will be much less people there. The garden isn't massive, but if you love places like this, I really cannot recommend it enough. One of the most peaceful places near the city. This is everything I can personally recommend for the city, but other things I haven't done that may be worth Googling for yourself include 10,000 Roses Cafe, Happy Beach, Biga Pit, Mount Mauyo Rock Monolith, Mount Mayupa, Capilla Santa Ana Museum and Community Center, and Bacalia Woods Campsite. Most of these are not actually in the city itself, but are close enough that you can easily do a day trip. Okay, once you're done checking out the city, you can either go north or south. For this video, we're focusing on the south. Head to either the bus terminal or the van terminal. Both will take you to the same places. Vans will get there faster than buses, but buses are more comfortable and a bit cheaper, so it's up to you. There are two options for heading south. You can go toward Mwabwa via Barili or head toward Aslab. For this guide, we'll first be talking about heading toward Mwabwa. At the terminal, tell the people there the exact town you're trying to go to, and they'll make sure you get on the right bus or van. You pay once you're on board. No need to buy a ticket. And don't worry if they walk away without giving you change. They'll be back before you arrive. The first place in South Cebu I recommend you go is Barili. Just get off the bus and ask around about where to stay. It's very easy to find a hotel there once you arrive. In Barili, I recommend you visit Mantayupan Falls. There are a few other things you may want to do there that you can learn about in the tourism center in the main part of town. I just want to also mention that Barili is often skipped by tourists. This area is truly gorgeous in a way that needs to be seen for yourself. Just take some time to walk around off the beaten path and just take in being out there in the province. From Barili, take a day trip over to Aloginsan. Start the day by visiting Boho River Cruise. When we went, it cost 400 pesos each. This is a gorgeous river which is truly cared for. If you can, try to come at high tide as the water is even more colorful during this time. This tour will seriously make you feel like you've somehow stepped into Palawan but without all the tourists. From Boho River, take a hobble hobble over to Hermit's Cove. We personally missed this for some reason, but I feel confident in recommending it as I've heard others talk so highly of it. Once you're done there, head back to Barili and catch a bus headed to Mwabwa. Welcome to the most popular destination for tourists on the island of Cebu. Here there are two main areas you may want to consider staying, either Panagsama Beach or White Beach. I personally have only stayed on Panagsama Beach, but I've heard White Beach has less tourists. In Mwabwa, there's so much you can do. The best thing you can do on Panagsama Beach is swimming with the sardines. A lot of people will ask to take you there for a price, but you can really just do it for free by swimming out to where you see all the boats crowded around. They'll all be right below you. People believe there could be up to a million living in this one area. I would also ask around to other people swimming and see if they've seen a sea turtle. It's very easy to find them on this beach if you just ask around. From this beach, you can also find people offering tours to Pescador Island. I've not done this, but you may want to look into it. Okay guys, let's talk about the number one thing most people come to Mwabwa for canyoneering at Kawasan Falls. Nowadays, there are really so many options for this. I personally recommend you just walk around Mwabwa because everyone is going to be offering to take you there. Just talk to a lot of different people to find the best price and don't be afraid to barter with them. If you don't know what this is, it's basically trekking through the most blue river you've ever seen while progressively doing higher and higher jumps. Don't do this if you're afraid to jump off cliffs into rivers. At the end, you'll be met with one of the most beautiful waterfalls you may ever Ever see. I do want to warn you though that this has become one of the most popular things in all of the Philippines to do, so be ready for it to be a bit overrun with people. I still highly recommend you do it at least once, just don't expect to be there alone. In Mwabwa, you can rent motorbikes. I highly recommend you do this. It'll save you so much money and time. If you don't know how to drive them, just take your time. It isn't too hard, as long as you do know how to drive a car and have balance to be on a bike. Take things slow at first and don't do anything you're not comfortable with too soon. Once you have your motorbike, the first place I recommend you drive is Asminia Peak. This is a very easy hike up to the top with an incredible view, but it's also the most popular peak in Cebu, so be ready for lots of tourists to be there with you. If you want a more private adventure, drive your motorbike 
your bike to Kandungo Peak. I personally recommend you ask locals which way to go to get there, as we had trouble with Google Maps taking us on a road that you really shouldn't be driving the scooters on. Kandungo Peak is truly awesome and is currently my favorite peak in Cebu. You will need to take a guide up to the top, but there's way less tourists, a small cave to explore, and a much more shocking view once you reach the top. This place actually has multiple peaks you can sit on. One they call Buis Buhai Peak, which means dangerous peak. I don't recommend you sit on this edge if you're afraid of heights. The only other peak I know of in this area is Casino Peak, but I personally haven't been, though I hear it's amazing, so look into it. One extra tip for you guys, take your motorbike to Lambug Beach in Badian. It's right off the highway. Ask locals to point you in the right way so you don't get lost. This beach is much more well known by locals as tourists will typically just stick to White Beach and Panag Sama. Lambug is a gorgeous white sand beach that I highly recommend for sunset. For everything else I'm about to mention, you can totally get there by driving your motorbike from wall to wall to them. But it'll be a long trip and I personally recommend you take a bus down the highway further south to stay somewhere in either Alegria, Malabuyok, Hinatalian, or Samboan. There is a link in the description to a really nice place that won't cost you too much in Malabuyok. From wherever you end up staying, ask around until you find a motorbike to rent. Here in South Cebu is some of the best waterfall chasing you can do anywhere in the world. There are truly a crazy amount to see, but I'm only gonna recommend the ones I've been to. If you wanna find the others, I personally recommend you just ask the locals once you're here, as most of them actually aren't even on maps. Start in Samboan at Aginid Falls. This, like most other falls in South Cebu, isn't actually just one waterfall, but five levels of waterfalls. Aginid is an adventure of trekking through large amounts of water, climbing up a waterfall using a rope, and lots of optional jumps. I can really not recommend this fall enough. From here, drive only two minutes north up the highway to get to Bina Lion Hidden Falls. This one is only two levels, but the second waterfall here is much higher, offering some really intense jumps if you're into it. If not, it's just a great place to swim and take pictures. Another few minutes north from here will take you to Dao Falls. Dao will make you feel a little like you're back in Kawasan Canyoneering, but without the jumps. The water here is stupidly blue. Be ready to get wet as you trek through waist-high water and, and cross an amazingly beautiful bamboo bridge to get to the falls themselves. Drive further north of the highway into the area of Hinatilan to find Inambakam Falls. Wow, I cannot express how much I love this waterfall. You'll have this place pretty much all all to yourself for what's truly one of the best waterfalls I've ever seen. You can take a guide and go further back to explore all four levels of the falls where you can swim and do cliff jumping, but the main attraction is the huge fall you'll see when you first walk up. When we went, you could see a rainbow at the bottom and use a rope they set up to pull yourself to stand out under the falls. I seriously need you to not skip this one. It's so worth it. Another one I need you to not skip is Kabutogan Falls in Malabuyo. This is in a lot of ways like canyoneering at Kawasan, but way less known by tourists and even locals. Your guide will take you swimming and trekking through the river to end up at a huge jump. After the jump, you'll be taken past the waterfall into a cave. On the way back, there are even more jumps you can do. This place is truly awesome and still very unknown by most travelers. Come here now before it becomes mega popular. Further north in Alegria is Mont Peller Falls. As of the time I'm writing this, they still don't have an entrance fee and no guides. But we were lucky enough that some of the local kids walked there and swam around with us beneath the falls. I personally believe this is still one of the best waterfalls I've ever visited. Not only the waterfall itself, but the views on the way there are truly out of this world. I really believe this place is going to become extremely popular, so go now while you can still have it all to yourself. Finally, we come to one of the most popular falls that isn't Kawasan, Kambais. Once you park, you have to walk a bit deep into the forest to find the entrance, but people are there to guide you if you need it. There are two levels of this fall. When we went, the first level was pretty crowded, but there was absolutely no one at the even more beautiful second level. We think this is because a lot of people don't even realize there is a second level as it isn't immediately obvious. 
so ask the locals to point you in the right direction to find it. The last waterfall I want to recommend is Kankalanog Falls. At the time of writing this video, this place is not on maps, but it's pretty close to Cambayas. Just ask the locals around this area to point you in the right direction. To be honest, this is the worst waterfall of all the ones I mentioned. But wait, the waterfall itself may not be anything special, but for cliff jumping and swimming, this place is like heaven on earth. The water here still may be the clearest I've ever seen in my life, and the overall vibe is just so much fun. Please come here, but keep your expectations in check. The waterfall itself may not be much, but it's still worth your time. Most of the waterfalls I've mentioned in this video require you to take guides to see them. They expect a tip at the end for their expertise and for being there to keep you safe in case anything were to happen. This is on top of the entrance fee. Please try to understand that this tip is their only wage and all of the entrance fee goes to the municipality or the landowners of the falls. A lot of foreigners complain about this tip as they don't understand it, but you need to pay it. Just expect to pay something so you're not surprised at the end. This is everything that I've personally done in South Cebu, but there are a few other things I want to recommend you look into. Also in South Cebu is an area known as Aslam. This is an absolutely gorgeous place with lots of great beaches. Here you can also go swimming with the whale sharks, though some people say not to swim with them here as you are doing it during feeding and it's completely overrun with people. But I'm not personally giving you my opinion on this right now as I've never been there to see it for myself. Just know this is a very popular thing to do on this island, so you may wanna look into it and decide for yourself. Take out your notepad and write all this down to look into. These are the other tourist attractions I've found in South Cebu that I haven't personally been able to visit. So look into them for yourself and see if you want to go there. Sumilon Island, Kalasa Falls, Tumalog Falls, Daihag Falls, Tinko Beach, De La Get Beach Park, and Simala. There are obviously even more, so check the comments as well for anything else that others may be suggesting. Thank you guys so much for watching this guide. I plan to do one of these for literally every island I visit in the Philippines. So be sure to subscribe to get the most detailed guides for traveling the Philippines there are. For those wondering, once I travel North Cebu, I will do a guide for that as well. So look out for that. If you want to see any of this in more detail, I've done vlogs on all the places I mentioned. Just check my playlist for the Philippines. Thank you, and I'll see you in the next video.